What's up guys? So day two of the Dragon Ball Fighters World Tour Finals just happened yesterday uh, and we got some pretty hype announcements that I'm going to run through real quick. We'll watch the trailer together in case you've missed it and maybe we'll do a little bit of frame by frame to cover exactly what happened. But uh, judging by the title, you probably already know some of the things we're going to see. So let's jump right into it here. So this is this is the uh, dramatic finish that was already data mined in the game, so we already knew this was coming. Uh, the one surprise here is they're doing this on the uh, space stage. I think a lot of people expected they would add a tournament of power stage, and that would be where this dramatic finish takes place. Hence why it wasn't like enabled, even though they added it into the game, you weren't actually able to do it. But anyway, looks like no. Tournament of Power Stage, as far as we know, yet. We'll, we'll see, maybe. But now we're going to show the other thing that we kind of knew was coming here. Which is Ultra Instinct Goku. He looks pretty sick, I can't lie. That, that heavy there looks kind of like uh, Gogeta, right? Like his stand heavy. Kind of a similar look. Now, now this is interesting. Check, check this out real quick. Projectile counter? Another projectile counter? Some kind of dash through command throw? Can we just watch that again? Hold on. A lot, a lot of stuff just happened. That's got to be a projectile counter, right? So there's the stand fierce. You see? The, it, Jiren did a key blast. That's got to be a projectile counter. Hopefully it's one that works consistently, unlike Jiren's projectile counter. And that looks like some kind of special move, I can't quite tell. But anyway, he looks cool. This uh, cinematic is pretty sick, I can't lie. So coming spring, only four characters. You, you would think. Okay, five characters. <laughs> we got Kefla. Pretty hype. This is this is another cool cutscene. Uh, definitely not something that I was expecting them to show so early. But uh, she looks awesome. Look how tall, like <laughs> taller than Goku. That's that's so sick. I mean, Goku's kind of bending over, but. Dude, now thi this is what looks godlike. It's like Hellzone Grenade or something. Oh my god, that looks so cool. And then this, I think, is a level 3? Hard to tell. But you, judging by the length of that super, you would think it's a level 3, right? So February 28th. <laughs> and then another awesome cutscene. I feel like all these new characters get really good intro and outro cinematics. I feel like all, almost all the DLC, it's been like that. But anyway, all right, so here, here's what we got to talk about here. Kefla coming the 28th of February. That's soon. That's literally two weeks away. And uh, also, it, it's a little hard to tell by reading this, but apparently, if you buy the season pass, you will get access to each character two days early. So you know your boy is going to have to do that to get Kefla on the 26th. Which probably means that we're going to get the patch that's going to add the selectable assist for everybody and stuff like that. Uh, either on the 26th or maybe a day or two before. Sometimes the patches come like a day before and then the character unlocks the next day. So anyway, that's soon. That's like less than two weeks. So uh, that's pretty hype. I'm definitely looking forward to Kefla, but even more so, I'm looking forward to the system changes, the new assists, all that stuff. In case you missed my video from Saturday, I cover all the details of that stuff. So, uh, pretty sick. I, I'm really excited and I can't believe it's happening this soon. So, Season 3 hype. Uh, real quick, I also just wanted to cover some of the things that happened uh, with the tournament itself. Some of the surprises that happened there. Okay, so first of all, I think the biggest surprise for everyone was Sonic Fox getting eliminated in the round robin pools, not making it to top eight. Uh, pretty unbelievable. I mean, 
I think most people expected we would get another Sonic Fox versus Goichi Grand Finals. Uh, instead, Goichi made it. Sonic Fox did not. Not even in the top eight. Getting beaten by Apology Man, which was also really exciting. Uh, Apology Man, obviously an amazing player, but, you know, did not have nearly the amount of points getting him into this tournament as a lot of the other players. And yet, he beat Sonic Fox. He made top eight, and uh, he made quite a good run at it. I think tied for fifth place, ended up beating a lot of insanely good players. Uh, so very impressive result by Apology Man. I'm sure a disappointing result for Sonic Fox going 0-3 in the pool. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Sonic Fox has plenty of amazing results under their belt. So I'm sure we'll see a lot more in the future. But yeah, that was definitely the biggest upset of the weekend, I would say, is not even top eight for Sonic Fox, the expected favorite to go all the way. So that was just crazy. Next up, I want to talk about Dekill Sage. Oh my god, Dekill Sage had an amazing weekend, ending up with a third place finish overall. Uh, I think maybe we could have seen Dekill Sage make grand finals, but it was so close and so scary. Uh, but I mean, what a result though. I think the power of Z Broly was really on display here. There were a lot of matches, especially early on in pools, where it was like, you know, Dekill Sage would lose a character pretty quickly or maybe end up on the back foot. But as soon as Broly comes in, that completely turns around the momentum. What a sick character. Only one Broly in the entire uh, tournament, as far as I know, uh, and that was Dekill Sage's Broly. Probably the best Broly in the world, not much doubt about that now. And uh, a really impressive result from him, so way to go to Kill Sage, the highest placing American player, uh, and did really great this weekend. Really exciting matches to watch, that was awesome. And then finally we'll talk about the man himself, Goichi, taking first place in this tournament. Congratulations to him. He was definitely a heavy favorite going in, but I think he really proved why he's so dominant. The defense is obviously insane. It's like impossible to open Goichi up, no matter how good you are. And then also the offense, the conversions off of stray hits. I think better than anyone else, Goichi was just like seeing stray hits, converting them into full optimal damage combos, and taking advantage of every interaction in a way that his opponent isn't. So that was really amazing. Uh, right here, this was the very first match of Grand Finals, Goichi versus Fenrich. I don't want to downplay Fenrich either. Uh, he did absolutely amazing with his Cell. You know, a lot of people have come to know that Cell plus Vegeta combo for being kind of a trademark of Fenrich, and he really showed off the power of it all across the weekend. Uh, but against Goichi, it's just so hard. You have to work so hard to get a single hit, whereas Goichi, if anything happens that he can grab onto and turn into his advantage, he's definitely going to do it and convert it into huge damage and a uh, big setup. So... Uh, yeah, this was the very first match. It ended in a Goichi Perfect, which is kind of crazy. Not exactly a, uh, like the game didn't recognize it as a perfect because he had taken a very tiny bit of damage, but absolutely no clean hits by Fenrich in this first game. Complete dominance by Goichi, but Fenrich was not going to go down without a fight. Here in the second game, Fenrich managed to pull off a perfect of his own. Again, it looks like his assist must have got hit or something and recovered the life because we're not going to see the uh, golden letters pop up on screen for perfect. But still, in my book, that's a perfect. If you got three green bars, that's a perfect. So very impressive display by Fenrich. Not going down without showing us why he deserved to be in grand finals. But then, uh, you know, Goichi managed to take the rest of the set and put it away. But it was a very close set. I recommend watching the whole thing. I'll link it down in the description where you can watch the uh, replay on Twitch. But yeah, it was hype, man. It was a really hype tournament. It got me very excited, both for, you know, the future of the game, hearing about all the changes they're planning on making. I think it sounds great. I'm excited to see where Dragon Ball Fighters goes in the future. And also just the, the tournaments for this game are so sick. But seeing this level of play is obviously exciting, but also the storylines for each of the players, the rivalries that build up. I just think it's awesome seeing someone like Apology Man or to a lesser extent to Kill Sage who have always been in the conversation for being like some really amazing players obviously but seeing them deliver in such a massive way coming out and proving to everybody that they deserve to be in the conversation for the best in the world I really enjoyed watching it so uh, again make sure you guys check out the replays if you haven't 
And uh, let me know down in the comments, are you hyped for Kefla? Are you hyped for UI Goku? Are you hyped for some new assists for your characters? I know I am. The rock is going away. We're not using Krillin rock assist anymore. It's out of here. Uh, so let me know what you think. And as always, thank you so much for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next one.